Hello class. Today I want to continue on with some more of our projectile motion practice problems. And I've put in the top of today's worksheet here, at least on my screen, uh, these, these two boxes where I'm putting in our formulas that we're going to be using a lot. Uh, I want you to see that again, everything's coming down to just these four formulas on velocity and position, one for the X, one for the Y for each one of them here we can do every kind of projectile problem with these problems. In fact, the ones that we've been doing, uh, and I think the ones I'll continue with you, uh, we haven't even had this term here, just to make things a little bit easier. We haven't had an initial velocity in the y direction. That just makes the problems uh, still doable, just a little bit more pro uh, a little more, more difficult, and oftentimes we need two, uh, two steps to do those. And we saw why I'm trying to stay away from that. I want you to get comfortable with just the basic projectile launched at a horizontal direction. Okay, so you might notice that some of these problems are very similar to yesterday. If you do that, it's awesome. That means you're, you're starting to catch on. Good job. Uh, if not, please look at these with me and follow them through. I'm, I'm trying to explain my thinking here. If, uh, if that doesn't make sense, please reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to uh, set up some time with a Google Meet that we can get together. Uh, and uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, we're going to be, I'll have a live class. We can spend some more time talking about these uh, as well at that point. Uh, we're going to be going over the review for our test on Friday. And this, of course, is a, a big component of that review. All right, so let's get to it. Uh, problem number one here. We're talking about a football, and it's thrown horizontally from a height of 1.8 meters at 8 meters per second. So what I always want to start them with, right, is we're going to start our initial problem. We're going to write down what is it that we know. Right. So it told us our x zero. Uh, it just says we're it wants to. It, we're always going to start x zero at zero unless it tells us otherwise. We can assume that it starts at zero. Y zero it tells us it's at a height of one point eight meters. Y f it's hitting the ground, so it's going to be zero. It gives us our velocity in the horizontal direction is eight meters a second. And since it's thrown horizontally, there is no vertical component, no y component. So we know that our vy zero is also zero. So writing down what we know, now we've got to figure out how much later does it hit the ground. So we're going to look up at our problems, our, our equations I highlighted up above in yellow. And which one of those can we use with the variables that we're given that will also allow us to get delta t? So I want you to think about that for a moment. Which ones are those that we're being given that will help us get delta t? It should jump out to you pretty quickly that there is really only one equation that we can use, and that is our y position equation. Why do we say that? Because we know yf, 0. We know y, 0, 1.8. We know acceleration. So we know everything we need to do to calculate our delta t. We also know our vy zero is zero, so this middle term here is going to fall out. So let's re. So what's that going to give us? It tells us that our our delta t is going to be equal to yf minus y zero, and we're going to divide that by our five meters per second squared. Let's plug in our values for this problem. Right, one point zero for our final position, one, negative one one point eight for our initial position, but we're subtracting it per our formula. Plug that into your calculator, it's going to come back and tell you 0 0.60 seconds. Okay. So let's look at part B. This is how far from the thrower was, how far from where the thrower was standing does it hit the ground? So let's, it's, it's asking us basically what is XF? What is XF here? So let's look for an equation. It's got XF in it. It has the other variables that we know. Well, it's going to be our position our equation up here at the top. Right? That's the only one that has XF in it. Does that give us enough information? Do we know X0? Yes. Do we know VX0? Yes. Do we know delta T? Yes. Let's start plugging things in. So we know our X0 is 0. Our VX0, the problem told us, was 8. We just figured out our delta T was 0.6. So we multiply them together and we're going to get 4.80 meters. Okay, let's move on to problem two. A projectile shot horizontally from the edge of a cliff 140 meters above the ground 
with an initial speed of 100 meters per second. So again, first thing I want to do, let's write down what is it that we know? What is it that we know? We know our initial position in X, Y is a zero. We know our height at the beginning is 140 for our Y zero. We know it's hitting the ground, so YF is zero. It told us our initial speed in the, was horizontal, so that means it's all VX. VX zero is 100 meters per second, and our BY zero, therefore, is zero because it's the velocity since it was thrown horizontally. So again, let's figure out what we want to do. How long will the projectile be in the air before it lands? Well, this is just similar to what we did in the problem above. We have a Y zero, we have a YF. So we can start with our position equation and just plug in our numbers. Right? YF minus Y zero divided by negative five, take our square root. Let's plug in our numbers. All right, we're 140 meters off the ground. And our numbers are going to come out to 6.29 seconds. Okay. Again, I want you to see what do we know? What are we looking for? Find an equation that fits. And then plug in our, rearrange it so it gets you solves for the variable you're looking for. And then plug in your numbers. How far from the base of the cliff will the projectile land? Well, again, it's going to be very similar to what we just did up here, up in the top problem here. We know we're looking for XF. We know what X0 is. We know what VX0 is. We just calculated delta T. Let's plug in our numbers. And we see that we went 629 meters. Okay. Well, hopefully this is catching on. Let's move on to the next problem. Let's continue on with that problem, rather. At the instant the projectile hits the ground, what is the horizontal component of the velocity? Well, when we think about that, there's no acceleration in the horizontal, the X direction. So what does that mean? That means your velocity is constant. VX is constant. We told us what our VX at the beginning was, 100 meters per second. So our VX at any time is 100 meters per second. At the instant the projectile hits the ground, what is the vertical component of its velocity? Well, here we can go back to kind of the, the definition of, of our Look, look at our velocity equation for y, f, and what is it? Take our final velocity is equal to our initial velocity minus 10 meters a second squared, gravity, times the change in time. Well, we now know all those. We know we started um, with no velocity in the y direction. We accelerated by gravity, and we were accelerating for 6.29 seconds. So our velocity in the vertical direction, vertical component of our velocity is 62.9, negative. And it's flying down, so it's negative. Negative 62.90, which then sets us up for our final part of this problem. If we know the x component, we know the y component, we can calculate the resultant, veloc uh, resultant velocity. Right. So for how do we do that? First, we've got to find the magnitude. Right. That's what I mean by these two vertical bars here. Notice I've got the v inside here is bolded to show that it's a vector. But we take a magnitude of it, it just becomes a number. So we just take, we use the Pythagorean theorem. Our resultant vector is the square of the x side plus the square of the y side. Plug in the numbers from our problem. And what does it give you? 118.14 meters per second. Meters per second. So remember when we're talking about resultant velocities, we need the, not only the magnitude, we also need the direction. How do we figure out the direction? Well, if we're going to find our theta, we need to take the inverse tangent of our y velocity and divide it by our x velocity. Again, we know those both now. Negative 62.9 for our uh, vertical velocity, 100 for our horizontal. You plug those into your calculator, what's it going to tell you? Negative 32 degrees. All right, so it's, hit, it's going at a direction of negative uh, 32 degrees. You draw that vector, you'll see it's below ground. It's going into the ground. Awesome. So that was kind of a long problem. It was stepping you through all the different pieces. We found the time. We found the x velocity. We found the y velocity. Right. Good problem for putting things together. Let's move on to our next problem. A baseball is fired horizontally from a pitching machine at a speed of 72 miles per hour. If the ball hits the ground 4.4 seconds later, when was it fired? Or, excuse me, from what height was it fired? 
So let's put down what is it that we know. We know our x0 is 0, right? Because we're, st we're standing at our origin. We know that our y final is 0 because it's fallen to the ground. We know our vx0 is 72 miles per hour. It gave us that. We know our vy0 is 0 because our it was fired horizontally. There was no vertical aspect to it. And then it told us our time was 0.4 seconds. So we got to figure, we're trying to figure out the height. So we're looking for yf. So again, we're going to go back and look at our problems here. Do we know enough for our yf problem? Do we know the initial height? Whoop. Do we know the initial height? No, that's what we're looking for. So if we're trying to find our initial height, we got our yf we know is zero. We're looking for y zero. We know our by zero has got a zero term. So we're going to use this yf position formula. And what's our that formula? It's yf equals y zero plus by zero delta t minus five meters per second times delta t. Well, we we're given all these except for our y zero. So we need to rearrange things and solving that equation for y zero. Take advantage of the fact that v y zero is zero. And what do we get? Y zero equals y f plus five meters a second squared times delta t squared. Zero plus five times 0.4 squared. That's going to give you 0 0.80 meters. All we're doing is plugging it into the base equation. We knew everything else. How far from the base of the pitching machine does the ball land? Well, if we know, we already know our x component of our velocity. Right? We know our x component of our velocity. And now we know our time. And we were given our time. So we can figure out how far the pitching machine kicked the, hit the ball, through the ball. Right? Simply xf is equal to x0 plus our initial velocity in the x direction times time. And we know we started at 0. They told us our x0 was 72 miles per hour. Let's convert that into meters per second. Right, we want to get the terms to match. So we're going to do, we got to convert from our miles to meters. Right? One mile is 1,609 meters. So there's our that first conversion. Then we got to take our hour and convert it into seconds. Right? One hour is 3,600 seconds. And then finally, that's that's our velocity we've converted. We've got to put our delta t term in here, our 0 0.40. Do that math there with the calculator, and you're going to come up with 12.87 meters. 12.87 meters. Really not all that far. All right. Let's go on to problem number four. A rock is thrown horizontally from a treehouse 6.3 meters above the ground and lands 5.1 meters from the base of the treehouse. So what I'm hoping you see in all these problems, we're only really talking about two pieces of information. We're able to solve the whole problem. So let's go look at this. For how long is a rock in the air? Let's write down the variables that we know. Right, X0, we're going to start it at 0. Y0, it, well, it, uh, whoop, I missed a term there. This should be 6.3 meters. Y0 6.3 meters. So let's uh, let me kind of fix that here real quick. That should be 6.3 meters. Our XF 5.1 meters is where it lands. Our YF is zero because it hits the lands on the ground. And we know we started with no y component of our velocity because we were thrown horizontally. So how long is the rock up in the air? Again, we have a y f and a y zero. We can use that information to find our uh, to find our delta t. Solve our position equation for delta t. See, delta t is equal to square root of initial position minus final position divided by our velocity. Plug in our numbers. What do we see? 1.12 seconds. This ball is in the air. 
At what speed was the ball thrown? Well, what are equations do we know for that one? We, we know an xf, we know an x0, we know a delta t, so we can use this first equation here. We can use that first equation right there, so let's go ahead and plug that in. We want to solve that, rearrange it to solve it for that Vx0. What's our equation? Vx0 is equal to our difference in our x's, our delta x divided by delta t, 5.1 meters minus 0 meters divided by 1.12 seconds. And that's going to give us 4.55 meters per second. What's the rock's resultant velocity when it hits the ground? All right, so it's asking for the resultant velocity. So we need to know the vertical component of the velocity and the horizontal component of our velocity for us to be able to figure that out. Well, we already know what our horizontal component is, right? Because we have no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So our velocity at the fi x final is the same as the velocity x at the beginning, which is 4.55 meters per second. So we still need to find the velocity of the y well, again, what do we know here? We know our velocity to find our final velocity. Take our initial. And in this case, we're going to subtract uh, gravity times time. Plug that into your calculator. And what are we going to get? Negative 11.2 meters per second. So now that we have the x and the y component, right? Remember, if we want to find the, 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 the uh, magnitude of our vector, we have to use Pythagorean theorem. We're going to square each one, add them together, and then take the square root. Plug that in your calculator, and you will get 51.0 meters per second. Okay. So again, I hope I want you to see the, these. We're just plugging these into the equation. Sometimes it's a little, you might have to check a little bit to find the equation, but it's not that hard. We're just plugging them into that equation. Once we know our, also to find our angle, right? If we're looking for velocity, we have to have our angle, we have to have our direction. That's the inverse tangent of our y velocity of our x velocity. Let's plug those numbers in, and we're gonna see that we have a negative 68 degree angle. So it, it hits the ground uh, with that negative 68 degree angle. And one more problem for today. A gun is fired horizontally from a tree stand 10.1 meters above the ground. The muzzle velocity of the gun, the speed at which the bullet leaves the gun is 475 meters per second. The hunter misses the deer, so the bullet doesn't hit anything and just falls to the eventually falls to the ground. How long will the bullet be in the air? So again, we're going to write down what is it the problem tells us. It tells our x0. Well, it's, it's usually going to be 0 unless it tells you differently. Y0 told us 10.1 meters above the ground. Y final is zero because it hit the ground. Initial velocity, 475 meters per second. So it gives us enough that we can start plugging things in. Uh, excuse me. How long will the bullet be in the air? We know our Y0 and our YF again. right? So we're going we're gonna to go right back to our delta T is, is our delta Y divided by one half of gravity. Plug in our numbers, and what are we going to have? 1.42 seconds that bullet will be in the air. So we're probably going to use that the way these problems are going. So let's look at the next part of our problem. How far away from the tree stand will the bullet land? So it's asking us for our x final. It's asking us for our x final. Well, we know x0 is 0. We just calculated our time. The problem gave us a velocity. So we have everything we need to use this equation. Let's plug in our numbers. Zero meters, 475 meters per second, our initial velocity. What's our delta T? 1.42 seconds. And when those multiplied together, we're going to get 674.5 meters. Okay. Well, guys, I hope this is helping increase your understanding a little bit. Uh, again, it's just those few equations we have at the very beginning. And I want you to get comfortable using these four equations. Again, note they're very similar to each other. Very, very similar to each other. 
just we can make some simplifying approximations or simpl simplifications rather because we're just doing our projectile motion. We only have one acceleration is only, only in the y direction. Okay. Have questions, guys? Please reach out to me. Please don't forget to take today's lecture notes quiz. There'll be a little bit more on um, projectile problems. And uh, tomorrow we'll have a live class and we'll go over the review of our unit. We've kind of been building to this point, start understanding what vectors were and how to add vectors and how to do components of vectors. And then we did some simple linear kinematics, right? One dimension, and we broke out into two. So if we could do these two dimensional things, the rest of it I'm hoping is pretty easy because it's really just applications that got us to the applications of the earlier ideas that got us to our final stuff here we're doing. Tomorrow we'll do that review. Thursday we'll do a, uh, an activity uh, that will involve, um, that'll involve some projectiles and some angles that we want to fire things at. Hopefully that'll be kind of fun. And then Friday we'll have a test on our motion in two dimensions. All right, guys, thanks a lot for listening today. Any questions, please, please email me. We can set up a Google Meet. Um, Thursday, in addition to doing our, uh, our activity, I will have office hours. I will post those on Schoology. All right, guys, take care. Have a good one. Bye.